Hi guys, I wanted to record a video of, of what you can discover using the really quite cheap Artel AP200 ODB2 scanner and diagnostics tool. Um, most people use this clearly just for reading error codes and resetting them. Whereas this, for me at least, in my opinion, there is a, a lot more of live live diagnostic data that you can you can get from this unit and it occurred to me that really used properly you could perhaps discover uh, which part is to blame for a particular fault rather than sometimes just randomly changing bits and pieces and I wonder if when we look at the fuel filter which seems to be a uh, common fault on the Freelander 2 when it's it's not extremely expensive and you know, sometimes people fit them and it doesn't do any good or they fit a cheap one and they, they're left sort of wondering, is it the cheap filter that's not working? So here's a quick video where we'll discuss what the fuel filter is, what it does, the levels of complexity that Landro was added to this fuel filter and how we would use the AP200 to actually get some data back to see if everything's working as it should or at least theoretically working as it should. Before we move on to looking at what the Artel AP200 uh, live data can give us uh, for diagnosing fuel filter faults or theoretically uh, diagnosing fuel filter faults, let's have a, just have a look at, at, the, at the Freelander 2 fuel filter and, and, and recognize that this is not just a, a normal fuel filter, this is actually a Land Rover fuel filter with the added Land Rover layer of complexities on top. So looking at the brown pipe on the left hand side, we have the fuel supply from the tank. It comes into the blue box where the filter is. It's pushed through the filter, comes out the right hand side brown pipe, goes past the fuel temperature sensor. Now remember that, that's where the fuel temperature is, is monitored. And then over to the engine where the high pressure pump sits. Goes round the engine. Obviously remember warming the fuel up as it goes round the engine. Comes back down the green pipe. And then it goes through thermostat at this stage. We can't see, we'll look at that in a moment. And then down the green pipe, back to the fuel tank. Now, that all seems quite simple. Okay, let's have a look at that thermostat that we mentioned. What does that do? Well, as you can see here, this is inside the fuel filter itself. And we see there on the left-hand side that the fuel return from the high pressure pump, which you remember is warm, which has been around the engine, goes past this this thermostat valve and what it does in its normal state is it's fully open now that's probably quite important it's fully open so the warm fuel from the engine which will eventually become hot fuel from the engine is flowing into the fuel filter and mixing with the the fuel that's inside the filter and any new fuel coming from the tank which is probably colder so the idea is, is to hit an optimum level of 34 degrees, as described here. At this point, you may wish to press pause uh, so you can read that, but either way, I will continue. One thing to note here is that the temperature sensor and this thermostatic valve are not connected in any way. And what I mean by that is it's not a case that the temperature sensor senses how warm the, the fuel is inside the fuel filter and open and closes the thermostatic valve. The thermostatic valve is a wax type th thermostatic valve and works completely independently. Now we understand all that, let's think of what could possibly go faulty on this fuel filter. So I guess it's the normal contamination of the fuel filter which stops the fuel passing through the filter uh, at the optimum rate of flow, which creates a loss of pressure on the fuel line. There is the temperature sensor, which could go faulty and not read correctly, which would alter the the uh, the engine management system's ability to understand how much pressure it wanted on the fuel line. But there's also this thermostatic valve, which is probably the more common fault, and it would potentially, since it's in its normal state, it is open. It would it would remain open, allowing all the hot fuel to go back around and keep circling around the engine time after time after time getting it rather warm so let's move on now which is the purpose of the video really to look at is it possible to use the artel ap200 
live data to detect if this is if there's any issues with this fuel pump. So we join here uh, at the stage where I've connected the RTL AP200 to the ODB2 port on the car. And I'm now going to read the, the PCM module to get the live data that I need. That's all, all to do with, with the fuel filter. Uh, during this process, I will speed up uh, some of the parts that are unnecessary for you to see. I'll leave this part in just so you can see the amount of data available just on this one PCM module uh, that could potentially be used to diagnose faults on your vehicle before just randomly changing bits and pieces to an attempt to find the, the, the faulty part. And this bit's interesting because I can see that I've uh, I've completed another successful diesel particulation filter uh, regeneration process. Last time I looked at that, I'd got one partially completed DPF regeneration. So I'll uh, I'll cover that in another video though. So that's them all there. Uh, let's go back to up the top and select the ones that we actually need to look at for the uh, for the fuel filter. And now we'll just change Fahrenheit to Celsius because it's easier for me to understand. And now I'll do a quick uh, engine RPM test so we can see the, uh, the actual uh, fuel line pressure. Uh, you'll see on the screen there, if you look down, although they're not together, strangely, you see a, a desired fuel pressure and an actual fuel pressure, which obviously it should should remain reasonably in sync. Of course, this is an only a only a 44 pound diagnostics tool, so uh, the data changes at, at diff different times. So, but you can you can roughly see that it's that it's tracking it. Uh, I'd expect that if you've got a problem, it will be it will be significantly out. So I'll do a uh, I'll try and do some stable tests: uh, 1,000 RPM, 1,500 RPM, and 2,000 RPM, just so you can see what uh, what what those pressures. Are. And you'll notice there that we've got a, we've got a, a fuel temperature there I think that says 19 degrees C. Here, this was taken on a different day, so this is a, uh, a Rotherham to Cleethorpe's drive, which is known about an hour and 12 minutes, uh, most of motorway. And what we've done here is we've gone on the motorway, put it into cruise control at 60 miles an hour, and we've been, apart from a change from the M18 to the M180, uh, we've been in cruise control basically for. 50 minutes, we join this clip just as we've reached 34 degrees centigrade on the fuel uh, filter line. And now here we've reached the end of the M180 and we, and we start to slow down and notice how high the, the temperature is now of the fuel line. Uh, and that's just again cruising at 60 miles per hour. And notice how that when we come into sort of uh, city type traffic or town driving where you stop starting, going around about something, the actual fuel temperature comes down uh, to a to, to a below 34 degrees C temperature. Whereas when you're running at a sort of a constant speed, you know, like 60 miles an hour or, or maybe even 40, then the temperature's always on its way up. Well, I hope this video has inspired some of you to take some of your own data uh, using, uh, whether it's the uh, RTEL AB200 uh, diagnostics uh, unit or some other unit, but it may have inspired you to, to have a look what uh, what good looks like uh, before you have a, a problem with your car. So you can hopefully try and diagnose uh, some, some of your own issues before just randomly changing parts. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you find it interesting, like, subscribe, let me know what, what you thought, and maybe I'll make some more videos like this. I'll, uh, I'll speed this up to the end uh, and, and leave it in, until we park up just so you can see some sort of town driving. You, you guys can slow it down if you need to or pause it.